After the House committee investigating Donald Trump's coup attempt found a seven-hour gap in his call logs on the day of the insurrection, Trump denied ever using burner phones. And then a bunch of people immediately came out and said, yeah, no, he definitely used burner phones. Oh, and also House Republicans have been getting asked if they're into cocaine and orgies. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. You know what, I'm not sure I want to take a closer look at a story about House Republicans having orgies. So for more on this, it's time for our new segment, A Distant Look. <laughs> this is, suffice it to say, one of the weirdest political scandals in recent memory, which is saying a lot. Let's remember, the president drew on an official weather map with a Sharpie and tried to pass it off as real, like a kid turning F on a test into an A. And yet, what I'm about to tell you tops that. As we mentioned yesterday, a Republican member of Congress, Madison Cawthorn, casually accused his colleagues of inviting him to orgies and doing cocaine. The sexual perversion that goes on in Washington, I mean, it, being kind of a young guy in Washington with the average age of probably 60 or 70, and I look at all these people, a lot of them that I, I, you know, I've looked up to through my life, I've always paid attention to politics, guys that, you know, it, then all of a sudden you get invited to, like, well, hey, we're gonna have kind of a, a, a sexual get together at one of our homes, you should come. And I'm like, what, what, what did you just ask me to come to? Yeah. And then you realize they're asking you to come to an orgy. Yeah. Uh, or, or the fact that, you know, there's some of the people that are leading on the movement to try and remove, you know, addiction in our country. And then you watch them do, you know, a key bump of cocaine right in front of you. And it's like, wow, this is, this is wild. One thing is for sure, Cawthorn is the first dude with a backwards baseball cap who calls it a sexual get-together. <laughs> Did you accidentally time travel to a 1970s swinger party? And by the way, can you imagine anything worse than a 1970s swinger party? Some weird couple in mustard-colored turtlenecks collecting keys in a bowl, dudes with big gold medallions nestled in their chest hair, a tray of deviled eggs just sweating on the coffee table, <laughs> while a Dave Brubeck record plays in mono? Gross. Almost as gross as the term sexual get-together. Just say orgy. That's gross, too, but at least when you say it, it gets over faster. Sexual <laughs> get-together sounds less like you're describing a wild, drug-fueled orgy in a D.C. hotel and more like you're describing the plot of The Ice Storm. Great movie, by the way. Weaver, Klein, Joan Allen, Christina Ricci, <laughs> Tobey Maguire, a future Spider-Man. In fact, true story. The Ice Storm, directed by Ang Lee, who also directed the Eric Bana Hulk, has retroactively been absorbed in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That moment at the end when Kevin Klein breaks down sobbing in the car, you guys remember, I can tell by your reaction. Breaks down <laughs> sobbing in the car and Toby watches helplessly, that's the moment he became Spider-Man. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that has been today's Tangent for Film Buffs. I'm sorry about that. The thing is, I just did some cocaine this morning with House Republicans. I had to. I had to. I had to. I was exhausted. I was exhausted from the orgy. If I didn't do the cocaine, I would have passed out in the middle of a closer look, okay? That's what I did. I did a little cocaine. If you want to blame me, that's fine. Just blame me. But that's why it happened, okay? That's why we're talking about the ice cream, okay? I did a little cocaine, and now I want to talk about one of my favorite movies. And you guys haven't seen it, but that's the problem. You should go out and see it. And I don't know why I have to beg you to do a thing that you're going to enjoy. Just do the thing you're going to enjoy, and then later you can come and thank me. But right now, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I've done talk about it. I've talked about it enough. And the problem is, you're not talking enough. And I understand I'm not leaving any gaps for you to talk. But trust me, when the time comes, you're going to say, I really enjoyed the ice store. That was obviously a very bizarre and shocking allegation, and it pissed off Cawthorn's GOP colleagues because he seemed to be accusing his fellow Republicans of being the sex-crazed drug addicts. And by the way, let me just state for the record, I don't care, have your orgies. You're consenting adults. If you want to roll out a tarp in a Holiday Inn conference room and go to town on each other, I'll be my guest. But the funny thing to me is... <laughs> okay, uh, don't use a tarp. Call me in the morning and say, I see now. <laughs> the funny thing to me is Republicans seem to care a lot. They don't care. They don't care about all the other insane and horrible <laughs> people like Cawthorn say and do because they're accustomed to a certain level of awfulness from fellow Republicans. But they care about this because they don't all want to be painted as sex-crazed drug addicts, which is why House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy called 
Cawthorn into his office yesterday to reprimand him. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy has rebuked Congressman Madison Cawthorn over his eye-popping claims about sex and drugs on Capitol Hill. The story has prompted McCarthy to call a meeting with the North Carolina representative. A source with knowledge of the meeting told NBC News that Cawthorn had no evidence backing up his allegations. I just told him he's lost my trust. He's going to have to earn it back. And um, I laid out to everything that uh, I find is unbecoming and should... You can't just say you can't do this again. I mean, he, he's, got, he's, got a, he's got a lot of members very upset. Dude, when you're trying to tamp down orgy rumors, don't say members. Just <laughs> say people. We know who you mean. And yeah, I'm sure they're upset. I can only imagine how upset my staff would be if I said they were having orgies. <laughs> yeah, we'd be very upset because we totally don't have them. <laughs> what? Uh, can, can you imagine if we were having orgies? Everyone but you? That, that, that's crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the funniest part of this whole thing is the uproar it's caused within the GOP caucus among Republican members of Congress who are now getting questions about it, including Questions from their own spouses. The 26-year-old claimed on a podcast that people in Washington have invited him to sex parties and used cocaine in front of him. Several Republicans say that they are getting questions from their spouses about his allegations. Yeah, I bet they are. If you <laughs> went on a trip to Vegas just to play the slots with some of your buddies and one of them posted on Facebook, everyone I'm with did cocaine at an orgy. <laughs> You get some spousal follow-up questions, too. And Republicans aren't just getting questions about the orgy accusation from spouses. They're also hearing about it from their constituents as well. McCarthy spoke out so forcefully because his caucus is demanding it. According to Politico, members of the far-right House Freedom Caucus have reportedly considered kicking Cawthorn out of the group. And Republican Congressman Steve Womack of Arkansas, who is 65 years old, complained he is now fielding questions from constituents about orgies. This is exactly what they deserve, because it's not like Republican members of Congress can just say that's a crazy conspiracy theory when so many of them ran on crazy conspiracy theories. What's Marjorie Taylor Greene gonna say? Use your head! There are no cocaine orgies. Now, moving on, we have some good news on the Jewish space lasers. We don't think they work on Saturdays, so that's exciting. And it's so telling that this is the scandal that has Republicans up in arms. Not, for example, the bombshell revelation that there's a suspicious seven-hour gap in Donald Trump's official White House call logs on the day of the insurrection he fomented at the Capitol. You know that thing that happened where a mob tried to overthrow the American government, basically an orgy where the only thing getting was democracy? A federal judge <laughs> and a House committee have both said there is evidence Trump's coup was a crime. He's under investigation for trying to steal votes in Georgia. And now it turns out a lot of evidence of what happened on January 6th has just conveniently vanished. Stunning new reporting in the Washington Post about the January 6th committee's investigation into a seven hour, 37 minute gap in the call log, those records of calls Donald Trump made that day. The committee is looking at the possibility of Donald Trump, the president of the United States on the day of the insurrection, using burner phones. Trump said this, he has quote, no idea what a burner phone even is. Quote, to the best of my knowledge, I have never even heard the term. First of all, I'm not willing to put any faith in the best of your knowledge. The best of your knowledge doesn't even include the name of the CEO of Apple. We appreciate it very much, Tim Apple. Remember that? <laughs> Couldn't even remember the name of the guy sitting next to him, so we just rolled the dice <laughs> and hoped it was the same as the name of his company. He can't remember that. How can he remember if he's ever used a burner phone? Also, I love that he claims not just that he's never used one, but he's never heard the term. Dude, you worked in New York real estate for decades. I'm betting every phone Trump used was a burner phone. Sounds like we've got ourselves a deal and to make it official, I'm gonna chuck this in the East River with all my other phones. <laughs> and of course, it probably won't shock you to learn that after he made that claim, at least one of Trump's former associates immediately came out of the woodwork and said, oh yeah, absolutely, he knows what a burner phone is. Former Trump National Security Advisor John Bolton says this, Donald Trump unequivocally, without a smidge of a doubt, 
knows exactly what a burner phone is. He recalls Trump using the term burner phones in several discussions and that Trump was aware of its meaning. Bolton also said he and Trump have spoken about how people have used burner phones to avoid having their calls scrutinized. I heard him use the term uh, burner phone a number of times. He said, quote, burner phones in, in conversation. He did, yes. It, it was a term he actually kind of liked. He'd say, you know, they have these burner phones. Trump always makes it so easy to contradict him by going overboard with his defense. Like, if he had just said, I've never used a burner phone, that would be harder to disprove. But when he says, I've never even heard of the term, a bunch of people are immediately like, yeah, no, he has. It's like <laughs> if your parents said they found weed in your sock drawer and your response was, what the hell's a sock? <laughs> And you keep them in drawers, you say? This is all news to me. I am an innocent man, I tell you. <laughs> These two episodes are deeply revealing for many reasons. For one thing, they show how the Republican Party has been consumed by its own conspiracy theories. It's also very telling what they're outraged about. They're furious that a fellow Republican accused them of being into cocaine and orgies, but they don't care that a former president tried to overthrow democracy and is apparently concealing the evidence about what he did on that day. We're missing seven hours of Trump's call logs during an insurrection. Who knows what he was doing during those seven hours? He could have been orchestrating the coup or calling his various accomplices, or maybe he was at a sexual get-together. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> this has been a distant look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help. Now more than ever, if you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.